9th of September, 2023. I'm doing this as a, a blank video um, because I don't really want to show the building I'm in as such. But Trevor and I are having a discussion that if you go to a local church building on a Sunday, very quickly they work out why you've come. Have you come to join them? Have you, have you come to be a member? Have you come to exercise ministry? Have you come to listen? Have you come just to worship God and to praise Him and to sing songs? Have, what reason have you come to join a local, a local church group on a Sunday? Are you happy to be a member of the audience or do you have any ambition to be on stage? Do you want to use the pulpit? Why have you come? And of course, for many people, joining a local church is because they want to be part of a group. And they want, for whatever reason they have, they do want a job. And they offer to put out the chairs, to sweep the floor, clean the toilet, and certain churches, generally, I'm generalizing, certain churches, they will say that if you're here for two years and we learn to trust you, then you can have a job. We can give you a job. Other churches are a bit more open-minded and they'll take you on staff as a volunteer, as a volunteer, or um, they might even consider paying you, hiring you to do a job in the church group. Not just on a Sunday, but during the week, you might be an accountant and you join a local church group and they find out your skills and expertise and they employ you as the accountant and they might even give you money. Or they might have a cafe and they're looking for volunteers to man the cafe and they give you a job. And they vet you just like the world does. That you have an interview, you you have you're questioned, and you're asked all these leading questions to know why you want to be a member of this particular local church. And if the only reason you're there is because Jesus has told you to worship him there and encourage people in the faith, and you don't want to be a member of that local church then they may allow you to continue to come as long as you don't, quotes, upset people. Trevor and I produce a video today to do with preaching the gospel. It's for all of us to preach the gospel. Every disciple of Christ who is saved by Christ in the usual way, repentance, forgiveness of sins, belief in the cross, <clears throat> allowing Jesus' blood to cleanse you from all sin, to receive the Holy Spirit, to be baptized with fire, and then to be led by the Holy Spirit, one day of salvation at a time. And those who've been set free are free indeed. And once you've been set free, and you can testify to what has happened for you, that once I was in darkness, now I am in Christ in the light. That is your testimony. And you know the power over the devil is the blood of the Lamb and the word of your testimony about the blood of the Lamb. And the devil cannot defeat you once you are truly born again. Once you're born again, of course, you need to be baptized with the Holy Spirit because Jesus said so. And once you're baptized with the Holy Spirit, you know you don't need a job. You know you can rest and remain in peace because the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ transcends all your understanding and you don't need to be hyperactive in your thoughts nor your feelings because Christ has met every need 
you could possibly have. And Jesus brings you right back to the beginning. A child of God, born from heaven above, enjoying the kingdom of heaven, because the kingdom of heaven belongs to little children. And those of us who are mature in Christ, we become little children about everything. And we observe the adults who try to tell us what to do, what to think, how to be, how to behave. But of course, the adults not in Christ are just adults not in Christ. Trevor and I talked this morning about the fact that God cannot change anybody's mind if their mind is made up and they think they're right and they won't be told they're wrong. Now, if you imagine a two-year-old, a literally a two-year-old, not in Christ, not a baby in Christ, a two-year-old, physical child, the parents tell the child that's wrong and that child is stubborn, stamps his little feet or her little feet, defiant, stubborn, rebellious, stiff-necked, hard-hearted, intransigent, incorrigible, won't be told what to do. And that two-year-old child is going to grow up to have a very difficult life, not obeying those in authority. What about a two-year-old Christian? In Christ for two years, no one's told him how to be. No one has been able to change his mind. He's grown up to think he's right and everybody else is wrong. So again, we're talking about the independent Christian, the one who's got his own Christianity, his own religion, his own way, his own truth, his own life, and will not submit to any other Christian in the whole world. That is your defiant, stubborn, independent, so-called Christian. None of us are independent of God. If you are born of God, you want to fellowship with the Holy Spirit and other believers. That is what you want to do. That's a longing in your heart to fellowship with God, the Holy Spirit, and other believers. And where is this God? He's in us, the born again us. Those of us who are born of God were in Christ, in the Holy Spirit, in God's will, the will of God the Father. So pray for us, Trevor and I in Norwich, UK, as we continue to try to help stubborn, rebellious, defiant people who claim to be Christian but they won't submit to the Holy Spirit, which makes them independent of the Holy Spirit. Those born of God do not continue to sin. And this particular person represents a lot of people like him. Just as God told Ezekiel, go and talk to the teachers of Israel, the rulers, the teachers, go and tell them. If they listen, they listen. If they listen and repent, they will live. If they listen and reject, they won't live. Read Ezekiel 2 and 3. Jesus Christ came. And Jesus Christ was actually the Messiah who was not only a prophet, the prophet, the voice of God, the mouth of God, Jesus Christ was the teacher, the teacher of teachers, the king above all kings, the prophet above all prophets. So Ezekiel is known to be a type of Christ. So when Jesus taught to the teachers of Israel, the, the lawyers, the Pharisees, the teachers of law, those who listened, listened, those who didn't, didn't. 
woe is coming to increasingly to all the Pharisees, but they don't know because they are blind and deaf. As in the days of Noah, they will be eating and drinking, marrying, giving in marriage, and when the end comes, they won't be ready. But we who are born of God, the body of Christ, we're the bride of Christ, waiting for the bridegroom. And there's nothing better than on the day of the marriage is to look forward to the bridegroom. The bride will not be thinking of anything else on the day of the marriage. No excuses, no distractions, and we are to ignore the foolish virgins who are still in the world. Worldly Christianity is not Christianity. It's nothing to do with Christianity. Worldliness is not godliness. Worldliness is not holiness. Jesus Christ was in the world, not of the world. We're in that Christ, in this world, not of this world. Whether we're sitting in cafes within church buildings or outside church buildings, it matters not because the rules are the same. Whether the staff are paid or not, it doesn't matter because the rules are the same. So God bless you. Seek and you will find that one person who is like you where you are in need of fellowship with the Holy Spirit just as you are in need of fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Jesus telling you to seek and find that person. And I would encourage you, it's not emotional, it's not intellectual, absolutely not flesh, spiritual only. Man to man, woman to woman. Lest you get emotionally hooked on each other and you get into an emotional marriage not made in heaven. Seek and you will find. Christ is in his people. The Holy Spirit will lead you to others who too have the Holy Spirit. One day of salvation at a time. Trevor and I have come to this place waiting for the Lord to bring someone in who's asked me for help, asked me to pray for him, but won't tell me what it's about. And all I can do is pray and ask the Lord about him, but I can't pray for him because I don't know what his problem is. So pray for us as we ask the Lord to continue to use us always to the glory of God the Father, in the Son, in the Holy Spirit. God bless you.